Okay, hi everybody. We're going to be doing a tear stain series, and this is part one of our tear stain series. In part one, we're going to just talk about some basic grooming tips and some uh, ideas for what we can do to start the battle against tear, tear stains. And we have tear stains here, but we have identified a model that has volunteered to come in. She'll come in next week. And she's got some pretty severe tear staining, so we're going to test some products on her, um, and that will be in part two. In part one, we're going to talk about some grooming tips, some grooming table tips on how we can just battle tear stains because it's just, there's a lot of things involved with tear stains. And it, usually, tear stains is something that is a partnership between the owner. The groomer and sometimes the groomer is the owner and your veterinarian it is a kind of a triad partnership and as far as working through tear stains a lot of times we do have to work with our veterinarian um, and we'll be talking about the health of the eye dental health um, and you'll be discussing those kinds of things that could potentially or allergies that could potentially be causing the tear stains. Um, uh, as far as groomers go, um, there are some potential ways that dogs can contract tear stains through either a boarding facility or through the groomer. And so if you uh, hire a groomer, a professional groomer, then these are things, again, a groomer can talk to you about um, some products that you can use or some uh, grooming techniques and so you'll want to have a good relationship with your groomer as well um, If we are the groomer and we are most owners do need to groom at home There are some grooming tips at home on the grooming table that we can pay attention to to try to Eliminate some factors that can cause tear stains and one would be um and our girls aren't so bad, but when we have our guests come in for part two, we will not be using the girl's combs on our guest model. We will be using her own comb. We will have sterilized the comb, meaning sterilized, meaning just washed with hot water. But you really want to wash your combs at least once a week, if not after every use. And so um, if you are, if we are boarding or if we are grooming a guest dog, we absolutely will use an identified separate comb for that person especially or the dog especially if they're tear staining because if I use if let's say Pinky had really bad tear, tear stains and if I use the comb on her and then I went around and I came over to Dolce and if this was a bac bacterial if she had a bacterial uh, situation with her tear stains then I would be actually adding that bacteria to Dolce's eyes so I don't really want to do that so just something that's really easy like washing your combs is really a great idea and um, when we talk about in the rest of the video we'll show you other products like when we're putting the powder on the eyes we really don't want to use the same powder all the time or we don't want to use the same uh, brush to uh, either whether it's to cleanse the eye or to, to apply conditioner. We don't really want to use the same brush that we use on Pinky that we're going to use on Dolce. And then if we have a guest that has some severe staining, we definitely will not want to use the same brush there. So our step one, kind of an inexpensive option besides washing our combs would be just warm water. So for example, I know Pinky is pretty clean right now, but we can use these cotton swabs and, and we'll, this is boiling hot water. And what you'll want to do is, what you'll want to do with pretty warm water is to dip these pads in here and warm the pads. And then you don't want to put hot pads on the eyes. So we'll let it cool a little bit and we'll take and this is really an expensive way to do it, is to take this warm pad and you're going to clean the eyes. If you yeah. want to go one step further and a pretty inexpensive is beyond the warm water would be contact lens solution. And you want to find contact solution, you want to read the instructions and make sure there is boric acid as one of the top ingredients. And so on a warm cotton pad you can put some of this on here and you can clean the eye so that would also be another very very inexpensive solution 
um, we have stopped using the contact loose solution because it's pretty mild and we find it to be not as effective for if we have a client that has severe tear staining. So uh, if we want to go one step further than that, then we have shown in previous videos how we use the Henry Shine. We use the Henry Shine. So again, what we'll do is we'll warm, we'll warm one of these pads in hot water or very, very warm water. We'll warm it and then we'll squeeze out the excess water and then we will put the Henry Shine on here and then we will use it to cleanse the eye. So that would be one option. We um, were very, this was very, very effective for Tweety and it did a very, very good job of whitening her face. And so we're pretty happy with this, but we have stopped using it altogether because she's been completely clean, cured of her tear stains. And so we still really like this product, but we're testing some new products out. So. We have um, a couple of more, I guess, more potent products would be the Pretty Eyes, the Artero Pretty Eyes. And this is more of a professional line. And so we're finding this to be very, very effective. It has done, we've seen some really, really good results using this Artero. And the other one would be the uh, Love My Eyes. And this is by Pure Paws. And this is Love My Eyes. Both of these are tear stain um, professional products. And so how you would use these products, uh, we would not dilute this with water. We would actually use these, these are um, two by two gauze. And you've seen us use gauze previously for teeth. We like to use these to clean the teeth. We'll put toothpaste on, but for tear stains, we will use these little really, really nice, and they're super soft, and we'll put the number on it, some um, Dynarex reorder number 3252. You can find it on Amazon. These are really, really soft, and we have found some people like to use a toothbrush on um, a dog's eyes, and for example, a toothbrush, um, <laughs> Tweety. Okay, so for for humans, we really talk about being very gentle around the eyes. And for even humans, when we talk about cosmetics, we would never want to take a toothbrush to the sensitive areas of the eyes because it is a more sensitive area and the chance of poking the eye is pretty high with the toothbrush. So we don't we don't recommend a toothbrush around the eyes. We do recommend something very, very soft, um, like the round, cotton rounds or these uh, gauze, they're cotton gauze. So how you would use these products, and I'll, I'll show you with the Artero. You would take the Artero, and it's a really large bottle, it's eight ounces. We're gonna douse the cotton. So you're just gonna wet the cotton like that, okay? Oops, let's move this out of your way. And we'll come over here. And grabbing the dog is a, another question. People say, well, my dog won't sit still. They won't move their head. One thing that will help is one of these travel pillows. And these are in the baby section. We find these at TJ Maxx, but I think you can find them on Amazon as well. They're little bumper, bumper sleep pillows for infants. But let's say, for example, we can come over to Dolce here since she's sitting, if you are having trouble grabbing a dog or, or getting them to sit still and you, they don't have a pillow like this, then what we recommend doing is you're gonna actually come up from the top and you'll have your thumb underneath and then you'll use your top fingers to come up on top and kind of hold their head still like this. You won't put any pressure or anything, but you'll, you'll capture them. And if they have, say, say she has hair all over her eyes, what you'll want to do is you'll want to hold the hair on her her eyes back because you're trying to get to this area and then you'll kind of support them like very gently so and then she's just going to rest her she's actually literally resting on my my finger and then when she jiggles again you know I'll encourage her to just rest rest on my finger if you don't have a pillow and that and that's the way you would maybe take this you can change the focus 
and we'll use her since she's sitting up. And you will come down here and you will isolate. And this is another way. You can come and put all your fingers underneath and then you will use your thumb to hold them gently like this so that you can expose these hairs and come over and clean and just kind of clean out and apply this Arturo to the eye. And she's rest, she's resting, and if she doesn't rest, then what I'll do is I'll come over, encourage her to rest, and then I'll come over, flip it around, and clean this side. And they'll naturally close their eye. So now she's just resting. She's resting. And if she were to fidget, then what I would do is I would gently encourage her, like she's going to fidget, I'll gently encourage her to rest. I'll hold any hairs back with my thumb, and then I'll get back over here and I'll, I'll clean these little tear stains. And we just recently posted a video, you can see her cleaning her own face. This was pretty stained, and this is just after a couple, a couple days of cleaning, and she gets pretty clean. We let it, we let it get really red. They stain. So that's how you would use the Arturo. And we'll show you how to use the, um, the Love My Eyes. Now the Love My Eyes is, this is a foaming cleanser, which is kind of cool because, um, before we used to make our foaming cleanser and the problem that we found is in our earlier videos we we invited you to make up um, a foaming cleanser using a Bed Bath & Beyond foaming cleanser but the problem with um, what was happening was people would make their own solution and in, in a Bed Bath & Beyond container but if you do not use distilled water and if you do it and you let it sit for more than an, a couple days um, or more than a week, uh, there is bacteria that forms unless you use distilled water and have a sterile environment. So it's better if you buy a solution and make sure that you don't make something up unless you make a solution to use just within the, the day or two. You don't really want um, your own made up solution sitting around for too long because then you're actually introducing bacteria into the face. So for this one, because it's foaming, it doesn't say shake, so I'm just going to, we only need one pad. I'm going to foam it out. You can see what it looks like. Like that. Looks like that. And because I don't want the foam going into her face, I'm just going to kind of flatten it out a little bit. Now we'll come over here, and I will apply it and not have it get in the eyes. So I'm going to clean, I'm cleaning this area here. Good girl, Pinky. Then we'll come over this side, we'll expose the, these stains and we'll come over. And it's, this pad's pretty, pretty soaked with this foam and I really like it. It smells very clean, very light. It's a very light scent. And I'm making sure not to get any of it in the eyes, but we're just cleaning it up. All right, so that's been clean. And this is part one of their system. This is the cleanser. Um, their system comes with the foaming cleanser. And then after that is step two, which is the debris remover. And then after that is going to be the productive cream. And then last but not least, it's kind of extensive. It's a step four, which is the powder. And so I'm going to show you how to use this, but I'm also going to show you alternatives. So step one, again, the cleanser. Step two, sorry, the cleanser, the foaming cleanser. Step two is the debris cleanser. Step three is the cream, and step four is the powder. So I know that sounds like a lot, so we'll show you what this is. This is step two, which is basically you're rinsing the foam off. 
And how are you going to use this? Because it's in a spray, um, you obviously are not going to spray this in the dog's, you're not going to spray this in the dog's face. So you're going to spray it, spray it on a, on a pad. You're basically just rinsing. So we'll come over here and we'll rinse this foaming cleanser off. We rinse all this off. Okay, we'll rinse this off too. And if you happen to have extra, like if you, we have these cotton pads that are soaked in water, I would also just, since I have the water handy, just get rid of all this and just really cleanse it. Okay, and see stuff is still coming off and she's not, she's not even that stained. All right, so that's step two. Step three is this tear stain remover. And this is a tear stain remover protective cream. So here is another tip. Um, this is um, basically a conditioner and it's a form of conditioner. And so if you don't wanna buy this whole kit, the two pieces that I would buy would be this um, foaming cleanser and the powder. Um, the, the if you want to save some money, but if you obviously, if you buy the whole kit, the efficacy of the tear staining would be highly increased because it has been de designed to be, um, used in a professional manner. But if, let's say you wanted to, you know, try to do this without spending so much money, this is a protective cream. It's, it's a conditioner. And one of the things we recommend is that you do not dip your finger in here and, contaminate this because this is obviously going around the eyes. And so what we would recommend you doing is just taking a little bit off. Um, um, actually, I'm gonna use a Q-tip. I'm gonna use a clean Q-tip and I'm gonna take a little off and I'm gonna just put some on my hand like that. And that way I'm not ruining the jar of cream by re-dipping because we wanna keep this pretty clean because this is going around the eye. If you do not want to use, buy this particular product, you can basically use a conditioner around the face. And so some ideas for that would be, for example, if I didn't have that, I might want use a little bit of this silk leave-in conditioner. This is from Pure Paws as well. I might, if I didn't have it handy, I might just squeeze some of this on my hand and I would use this Instead, I know a lot of our friends are using the Pure Paws silk cream. We, we add this to the bath when we're soaking our dogs. And so I would maybe add a little bit of this and put this around their face. So you have some options if you don't want to buy that particular piece. However, I do recommend getting the kit if you can. Um, so here we have the silk, but this is the one that comes with the Love My Eyes. and what I would do is, you have a couple of options. You can use a Q-tip. So for example, I will show you how to use a Q-tip. I would soak this Q-tip with the conditioner and I would put it gently around. And what you're doing is you're sealing, you're wanting to seal the hair and make the hair healthy. And when what happens is when you seal the hair, you're preventing further stains from soaking in. So, so that's one way to do it is to use um, to use a Q-tip. The other way would be for us to use a makeup brush, and so you can use a makeup brush. And the reason why we're going to use a makeup brush um, to show you as an option is because we'll use the makeup brush to apply the powder. So here, what we'll do is we'll get some of this cream, and we will apply it to the stains here and around here, just to condition, just to condition the hair. Okay, so that's with the brush. Now, the final step. 
The final step, step four, is this powder. It's the Tear Stain Removing Absorption Powder, and they have two colors. This is white, they have a clear. If you have a Maltese, obviously, you would want to get the white. And a cheaper alternative to getting this would be just plain old cornstarch. You can get cornstarch um, at the store, and cornstarch would do not quite the same thing as this. Cornstarch will help keep the eye area dry. It will absorb the moisture, which is what you want. Is you want the moisture, you want your eyes to dry out. So cornstarch will serve a purpose, and it's actually much cheaper, but it will not do the same thing as this absorption powder. The absorption powder will actually add a white color, and it actually will keep the eyes much drier. And so, again, we, w we don't recommend, and I'm not going to do this right in front of her because I don't want it in her face, but right here? Okay. Um, what we're going to do with this is we're not going to poof it all in her face, but we're going to, this is what it looks like. But we're going to take some, we're going to take some out. We're just going to take some out, and we're going to put it on a dish. Okay, here we go. We're going to get a cotton swab. This is part three. Our, actually, this is part four. We're adding the powder. But before we add the powder, we'll moisten the cotton swab. Come over here. The moist cotton is able to pick up the powder. And then we're going to come and we're going to apply it gently to the eyes. The powder will keep the eyes dry. And we put conditioner in part three, step three. The conditioner will keep the seal the hair and prevent new stains from sticking to it. So you can, one way is to do it with a Q-tip. It's very sterile. It's great. The other would be to use this makeup brush, which we washed, um, and you don't want to use an old makeup brush. You want to use a new makeup brush every time. You'll come over here and you'll get some conditioner on it, so you can pick up some powder. Come over here and you can pick up some powder without having it fly all over the place, and it won't poof all over the place. So now we've got the powder ready to go on Pinky's eyes. We'll come over to this side of her and we're going to we're going to gently apply it. She's not very stained. When we use it in our model, when she comes in, you'll be able to see how this actually whitens. So you're not going to want to take any of this out. You're going to want to just leave it in. Because what it will do is it will keep the stains if she tears, the stains will not be able to stick and absorb into the hair. So a big battle, a big part of the battle with um, tear staining removal is just keeping this area dry and clean. And so that's it. And you're going to want to use this um, Love My Eyes kit. You're going to want to use it twice a day, three times a day, or at least once a day if you can. Um, and if you don't have these products, it's okay. You totally have a chance at cleaning, getting rid of tear stains by washing your combs and um, cleansing with, with warm water and a pad and even just using a Q-tip with a little bit of conditioner, whatever dog conditioner, because dog conditioner has a different pH, but whatever conditioner you have, if you can apply that always in, during the bath as well as on the table, and then dry it out with either cornstarch or, or professional products like Love My Eyes. Or another option would be, perhaps you can, you can get this on Amazon. If you want to get the Arturo, this works really great. But the parts that's missing is the conditioning and then the powder. So another option would be to get the Pretty Eyes. And then maybe just get the protective, protective cream and the, the powder. Or, or maybe you can just get the, the Love My Eyes stain remover and get the powder. So, you know, whatever steps you can do will help with tear staining. So, now that we showed you on Pinky, we're going to just show you again the steps for Dolce. 
We've cleaned with our Arturo. We'll get some protective cream for Dolce. We're gonna come over here and we're going to, for long hair, gonna come over here and put it on for stain. Come over here. And we're gonna put it just on her stain here, like that. And then we're going to get some more powder. And I actually have her powder. I have um. I have these little madelines. I I mean uh, macarons, and I keep Dolce's powder in this particular container. So I'll get a Q-tip and I'll condition. I'll dip it in her little supply, and then for Dolce. We'll apply it right on the stain. Getting it? Right here on the stain. Good girl. And you can see it whitens right away. So we'll show you on the other side here. Now that I got the powder uh, cream on. And then I'll apply the powder like that. The fact that the conditioner is on the Q-tip helps keep the powder from flying all over the place. 